All right, we'll catch up soon. I, I gotta run. I'm actually filming a video about my entire camera collection today. Um, you know, that's that's a good question. I, I don't know who's gonna care. I, I guess we'll find out. It is not often that I sit in front of my camera and talk to it these days, but I have 30 cameras sitting in front of me that I've collected over a generous amount of years. And there seems to be a lot of interest in vintage cameras and what cameras are actually used versus which ones just sit on your shelf. I know I'm interested in people's camera collections, so here we are. First, we are going to get into 35 millimeter SLR cameras. The first one I will pull is this lovely and gorgeous Nikomat. This is an absolutely adorable camera. There's something about this one that I just love. It it is the build quality is lovely. It's heavy, so it just feels sturdy and expensive. Um, mine, unfortunately, does not function properly. It has some issues. So this is one that I keep around because I don't I don't mind looking at her. I do love the focus ring on this lens. This has got a 50 on it and it looks gorgeous and I wish I could shoot it. Okay. Next up, this strap is like really it's like aggressively taking up attention. Next up, we have the Canon AE1. We've all heard the name. This is like the go-to beginner film camera. Uh, also doesn't function. Sad. Um, I have actually two more of these in a cabinet that I didn't even bother bringing out and showing. They're all the same. They all have 50s on them um, and they all don't work. <laughs> so I keep them around because they're classics and I want to hold them for my family and I think it's I think it's good to hold on to these things and pass on to your loved ones and keep around. Next from the pile up, this is the Minolta SRT 102. Uh, this is one of the first SLRs I bought myself. It has a 28 millimeter lens on it and it's an F 2.8, so a nice and bright fast lens. Uh, this one does work, so let's let's hear the shutter for a second. Uh, let me let me get focused here. Also love the focusing ring on this one. It's a pretty good sound. Want to hear it again? Here we go. Yeah, delicious. Next up is the Yashica FX2. This is another cutie pie. This one is a 50 millimeter 1.9 lens, so even brighter than the last. Oh, this focusing ring is really smooth. I haven't shot this one in a minute. Um, let's see if we can get a nice shutter here. Yeah. Cha-ching. It's a, it's a good one. One more. One, two, three. This camera was also given to me. A lot of these cameras you're gonna see, I've just been lucky enough to inherit from amazing family members. <laughs> Another really great 35 millimeter camera I have, this is just the body because I currently don't have any lenses for it. Uh, this is the Canon EOS 630 and it mounts Canon EF lenses. Um, those can be absolutely which is why I'm holding on to this guy because I could get a pretty cheap lens that looks really great. Um, and this, this camera is just a totally different experience. It feels like shooting digital, but the shots that come from this camera can look so sharp that they almost look like medium format. I picked this up for like 60 bucks. Uh, that was a handful of years ago, but there are a lot of similar bodies to this one that probably aren't marked up too bad. So it's a great, a great way to get into film if you're already a digital photographer. Continuing on with more 35 millimeter cameras, I have a ton of point and shoots. Uh, let me just grab one. The first is the Yashica T4. This is one of the best. Um, 
talked about a lot these days. And I personally really love it. It has a 35 millimeter lens. Um, I do find I have focusing issues with it more than some other point and shoots I have, but let's take a shot uh, so you can hear it. Yeah, this camera's, this camera's fun. It's tiny, I put this thing in my pocket or around my neck. Um, great point and shoot. The next one, kind of in the same realm, kind of produces the same look, uh, is the Olympus MJU-2. This is another one that got pretty popular and pretty expensive, you know, for a reason. I don't have any film in here, but that's what it sounds like. A great camera, uh, this one and the Yashica, they're plastic, uh, so they're light, which is great, um, but they don't feel like necessarily premium. A super, super, super budget camera back in the day. This is the Chinon Bellamy. Watch this. Cutest little lens door you've ever seen in your life. Uh, that's a crowd pleaser right there for sure. This camera was just a little budget point and shoot um, competing with some others in its, in its early days. And it's just adorable. It, the pictures don't look great, um, but it's so cute and so unbelievably small. Like it's crazy how tiny this thing is. Um, and it doesn't actually feel very cheap. Uh, so let's listen to it. <laughs> Tiniest little, weakest little shutter. Ooh, I like the winding sound. And the opening and closing is nice. Very nice. I mean, adorable. Adorable. Next up, uh, another crowd favorite is the Nikon L35 AD. This boy is chunky and a little bit heavy, but really amazing. Like it's popular for a reason. Mine, unfortunately, it turns on and it it works technically, but I cannot get it out of self timer mode, which is a common issue for this camera, I guess. I was reading some forums recently and found that out. So you'll see right now when I go to take the picture, oh wow, this viewfinder sucks. So, it goes off, but then you see the red lights on, it's doing a self timer countdown. And so all these, all those seconds go by and you have no idea when it's gonna go off. So that sucks. Now, this is one of the cooler 35 millimeters I have. This is the Nimslo 3D. This takes images out of each lens for every time you press the shutter. So they are just slightly different angles from the subject and you can basically stitch them together in post and create a moving loop. It's really quite fascinating and very cool. I've only put a couple of rolls through this because I've experienced just some shutter issues and whatnot, but I would love to shoot more of these uh, in a more stylized environment. Um, I think you can make some really, really captivating loops with these images. The next point and shoot is definitely my favorite uh, and definitely the most uh, obnoxiously priced. This is the Contax T3. I have the all black double tooth version and this camera is so luxurious feeling. It's made out of all titanium. It's tiny. I mean, I love that it's monochrome and all black. I have this thing in my pocket or in my fanny pack at all times, which is why I love it. It comes everywhere with me, which is half scary, um, but so worth it when, you know, something happens and I can whip this out and grab a shot of it. And here is the shutter for you. Man, I am gonna have so many pictures of myself filming this video on all of these rolls. <laughs> and then the last 35 millimeter that I have 
is a rangefinder. This is the Contax G2. I pulled the trigger on this one after I bought the T3 and felt that in my hands and really fell in love with everything that is how Contax makes a camera. Um, so I bought another one, um, but just with some more control and with, um, of course, the interchangeable lenses, which is why I was so excited about getting this camera. Um, I only have the 28 millimeter lens, but I am on the hunt for some more to be able to have this be like a professional working camera that I can show up to a shoot for and shoot everything on. Um, absolutely gorgeous camera. Most of my 35 work lately has been made with this camera. Um, and same with the T3, it just feels unbelievable because that titanium. Next up is medium format cameras that take 120 film. Uh, this classic right here, uh, the Holga 120N, these are like the plastic intro camera to 120 film. Um, I remember being in high school and drooling over this and owning a couple and just feeling like on top of the world to have one of these. Um, I've seen some really amazing photographers who are Holga only and the look these cameras give is so unique and so cool. I haven't shot one of these in upwards of 10 years um, and I'm, you know, I, I'm probably not going to load this, but I feel like I need to hold on to it because it is a classic. Um, so there's the Holga. I have one of these which are just so cute and funny. Um, one of my favorite shelf accessories ever because of its fun shape. Uh, this is the brownie. This is the Flash 620. Um, these are really popular and common to find in like thrift stores and whatnot. The viewfinder is absolutely microscopic, um, which I completely don't understand. Um, and there's the sound of the shutter. Uh, quite funny actually. I ha there's a lot of tension in there so I don't know if mine's working correctly. Um, but man, what a cutie. And next up is my arm workout uh, with the Mamiya RZ67. It is a sight to be seen. Add the viewfinder. Look at how big this thing is. It's as big as my head. This camera is near and dear to my heart. I got it as a Christmas gift from my lovely, thoughtful partner. This is the 110 lens on it, which is honking, uh, but it's a 2.8, so it's fast and bright. Um, I have a film back on here, and I have the waist level viewfinder, so you gotta be above that to take your shot. I love the experience of shooting this camera more than any other camera I've ever owned. Um, to take photos with this thing is such an experience and it's tactile and it sounds lovely and unfortunately I can't show you what the shutter sounds like right here because it's having some issues and I cannot diagnose it for the life of me. So just let me wallow in some self-pity for like two months and then I'll repair it. But the image this camera produces is just bonkers and it's what made me really fall in love with medium format film. And uh, I have a couple of lenses for it, but the 110 really is probably the best one I've used. One of the bigger issues for me with this camera prior to having this strap was having to carry it. I mean, it's heavy, it's huge, and so it was hard for me to be agile to be able to take good photos in pretty places uh, without some sort of way to carry it. Um, and I was so lucky. Uh, Clever Supply Co. reached out to me and they sent me this lovely medium format strap Clever Supply Co. makes handmade leather camera straps because they simply just want photographers to be able to do their job as efficiently and as effectively as possible and be comfortable while doing it. And this strap for this camera literally changed my shooting life. 
I bring this camera with me way more now and I'm able to sling it on my shoulder, although it is heavy and obtrusive, I can at least have my two hands to get me places and to be able to do things. If you are looking for a camera strap for one or for multiple of your cameras, go check out Clever Supply Co. They're doing really good work. I'm actually waiting on a few more straps to come my way because I love this medium format strap so much. I want them everywhere because they're so high quality and I love the way they look and they only look better with time. So go check out, uh, I will drop a link below for Clever Supply Co's shop. They make tons of beautiful straps in tons of beautiful shades. So this was another recent gift from my partner. This is the Mamiya C33. I love the, the TLR system, the double lens, um, the waist level viewfinder. I'm hoping this camera is working or close to working because um, I'm so interested in shooting the TLR system and I just love the form factor of it. So that wraps up all my medium format film cameras. Let's move on to instant cameras. So first up is the Polaroid Sun 600. I love the look of this camera so much and just the top flash. Oh, I love the Polaroids back from like the 80s and 90s. There's something about them that like gives me calculator vibes and it, it works. A very similar one that used to be uh, my partner's when he was a little boy. Um, this is the Polaroid One Step Close Up another absolute stunner. Neither of these are functioning, but they're my favorite thing to decorate with. So these are scattered about my home on various shelves um, to just, you know, to give the place some character. Next is the Fujifilm Instax 210. I remember buying this in high school or college. Uh, and I'm so glad I never let it go because I still just absolutely go nuts for the instance that this produces. Let's take a shot. And there we go. We will wait a second for that to develop. It's got a number of settings and you can control it, you know, in, in minor ways. And it's also just like big and over the top and fun. It's so much fun. When people see this in your hands, they're like, okay, I'm ready. Next is a newer Polaroid. This is the Polaroid Now and man, it is so cute. Polaroid knows what's working these days, which is like retro colorful. Um, and so this whole line was was really quite fun. All right, let's take a shot, see how it sounds. Boom, there she be. And lastly for instant cameras, but certainly not least, is the Fujifilm Instax SQ1. I love this camera and how it functions. Uh, this twist lens is so nice. It's also how you turn it on. You can also see that there is a mirror next to the lens so that if you're taking a group shot or a party shot, you can see yourself, which is pretty fun. Um, I know that there's no film in here, but we can still hear the sounds. Here we go. One, two, three. Film would come out at this point. Um, yeah. Really easy to use, really cute, and nice and compact. That does it for instant cameras. Next up are these three land cameras. All three of these were inherited by family, and none of them work, but they are some of the coolest things to put on display, and looking at them simply brings me joy. So this first one is the Agfa. Ansco. I have, I'm, I'm probably saying that just horrendously, um, but man, she is just a sight to be seen, is she not? She's gorgeous. I love everything about her. Um, they have, you know, these little stands that flip up, so 
she can be displayed as she should um, in all of her glory. So there's the Agfa. Next, this is a Polaroid. Um, this is model 80. As far as I can tell, there's nothing else to indicate what model this is except for this etched into the little stand. Um, I know nothing about this camera, but another one that just simply looks beautiful. Yeah, I haven't used one of these a day in my life, um, but there she is. And then lastly, the one that I wish I could shoot, uh, just because the form factor is so phenomenal. This is the Polaroid Automatic 250. Um, you can, you know, get her down into almost nothing and then build it back out. Uh, so really kind of tactile and just like fun to work with. So cool. Next up are these lovely motion picture cameras that I also love to have on display. Um, this one is not working at all. You can hear when I press the shutter, absolutely nothing happens. So this machine is probably dead, um, but this is the Penny's Super 8 and it, it just looks like the most simple camera ever to use because there are quite literally no buttons except for the shutter. Um, and then this is the zoom lever. So I imagine if I could shoot it, it would be so unbelievably fun. But for now, she lives on my shelf like this and looks divine. Next, this is the Kodak Zoom 8 Reflex. Uh, this was a gift and it does work but I have yet to put any rolls through it, so I have no idea if it's working properly, but I do know that there is hope for this one. Yeah, this camera is one that I would love to be able to shoot and probably will one day, but I'm honestly not in a rush to, uh, to pay those bills, so. All right, so next up is digital cameras. The first one I want to talk about is the crappiest camera I have ever owned and possibly the one I love the most. This, I don't even know what brand it is. I think it's Suri, something like that. You wouldn't know. It doesn't say it anywhere on here, anywhere, nowhere. In fact, all it says is that it's a digital video camera. That's all it says. So if that's not telling you something, the battery also is high power. This is a digital camcorder that I got because I wanted that classic family get together camera that you could just whip out and, you know, hand to anybody and they could press the record button and do their thing. Uh, it has really horrible zoom and it's like choppy when you zoom in and out which just like makes it even more lovely for me for whatever reason. It's like the crappier the better. This was $65 on Amazon. It feels, doesn't feel totally crappy, but like it's crappy. It ri You can see by the example footage that it automatically gives anything you film a very nostalgic feel. I wish so badly I could throw a Cine Bloom filter on here because I would, but even then, I'm so happy with the image that this camera produces. I bought the crappiest one because I wanted the crappiest picture because uh, the point of these is to like have things not look good. Um, so this is, this is my mom cam, if you will. Next up in the lineup is the camera I am shooting on right now. Uh, I'm filming this on a Fujifilm X-T4. I love this camera. It is a really lovely hybrid photo video camera. I personally only use mine for video because I feel better when I have a dedicated video camera that is always ready for filming. So I, I strictly stick to video and I, I mean, I can't say enough good things. It's compact, easy to travel with, 
and uh, depending on your lenses, you can get a lot of really phenomenal looks out of this camera. It also is reasonably priced for the powerhouse that it is. Uh, so I love that about it too. It's a really just great consumer camera for anyone interested in photo and video. And last, but most certainly not least, my digital photo camera. This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S2. Not that you can see it behind this lens. This camera is a medium format digital camera and has absolutely changed my life um, and changed my opinion on digital. I'm such a digital fan again because of this camera. I've just, I've never had a better camera in my life. It by far produces the sharpest and the most detailed images uh, I've ever, I've ever shot. And I owe her a lot of credit for some of my favorite digital images I've ever made. Wow, that was a mouthful and I am ready to stop talking. Oh my God. Oh, I cannot believe that just happened. I actually feel like I might be sick. Is this real? Is this real? Oh my God, I cannot believe I own a...